Morning, everybody. Happy Veterans Day. Um, I've got the day off, so we are going to uh, work out here and see what we can get done. So let's uh, let's take a look at what we got. No, you're not bringing home another piece of junk. <laughs> All right, well today I feel a little better about uh, starting this thing up because uh, I've got a cooling system on it now and uh, I just, I, I don't like running them with, uh, you know, without water in them. I know you see that a lot on on uh, YouTube videos and uh, if got people want to do that, that's fine. I just kind of prefer not to do it, um, especially when it comes to an engine that hasn't had a cam break in done yet. So I want to get, figure out what the problem is get it running right and get that cam brake in done right away so uh we don't have any problems with that i've flattened one cam out um and all the time i've been building motors and that is a uh that is not a good feeling to have to pull that thing apart again so uh to go back where we left off uh this thing would start um when you're revving it it would back pop through the throttle body a little not like continuous like a like i would think from a valve uh, which it could be but uh but i don't think that's it uh done some troubleshooting reading and it's pointing to uh ignition problem uh possibly a vacuum leak um or timing problems so uh i've said this a few times in my last video i've got my uh my uh parts hauler van out there which is you know 92 gmc tbi setup so we're gonna swap a few parts and see if that makes any difference so let's uh i'm gonna start by taking let's take the pcm out of here like i said a few times in this video and in the, in the last one that thing sat in this van since 2004 hasn't had power on it so when i turn the key on the check engine light is not coming on, so I don't know if that's uh and I rechecked the wiring, it looks like it's right. I know the bulbs in it is good. I tested that, so um let's throw this PCM in the van and see if it how it runs. Um easy to do, it's right under the seat. And um maybe we'll throw that one out of the van in here and and see what it does. So that's an easy little troubleshooting deal. So let's start with that and uh, see what happens. All right, so there is a, there's a difference in these PCMs. This one is a newer part number that 161-46299. This is a 1227747. This, I mean, this is kind of the standard when you're doing these. Uh, TBI swaps to do that one, to use that one. I can't remember what the difference in this one is. The plugs are the same. And then one came out of a 92 GMC and one came out of a 91 Chevy. So, I don't know how much difference there could be. Well, I mean, we ain't gonna hurt nothing. Let's just plug the thing in and see what it does. Worst case scenario is it doesn't run. So, yeah, let's just let's just try it and see what uh, see what happens. All right. Well, everything plugged in the same. Let's see what we got here. The change. Fires right up. Check engine light. Okay, well I think we can safely assume that that is not the problem. Because it fired van up with 
no issues whatsoever. So regardless of not having power all that time, I guess it's uh, I guess it held its programming. So yeah, it's doing its uh, regular high idle for being cold. So I think we can switch that back and safely assume that that's uh, that that's okay. And it did fire the check engine light. So I'm wondering if I uh, maybe that uh, socket for that bulb isn't any good because uh, I use the uh, I use the oil light and uh, put a little LED bulb in it, but. Um, like I said, maybe it's not, uh, it's, it's one of the old 61 sockets, so maybe that socket's just bad. <clears throat> okay, so that kind of, okay, uh, ignition problem is uh, one of the other things. Timing, I've ch checked a couple of times, and I just don't see an issue with the timing. Uh, I've got it on top dead center. Um The only thing I can think of, that balancer is not a 283 balancer, which the 283 doesn't really have a balancer, but you can put one on it. It's um, it's just like a pulley hub that you bolt the front pulley to. So I guess it's possible that the timing mark on that isn't the same as the timing mark on the old 283 hub. So let's go in. I'll put the... Uh, Put the old push button do my hickey on the starter let's uh just do the uh finger compression in the whole thing and see if we can get that thing on top dead center that way and see where that timing mark is um if it's close and i if that's not it i think we're going to move to it. I can pull the doghouse off of here pretty quick and mark this distributor, just pull this whole distributor out in one piece, set it in that engine and see what it does. Okay, so let's check this timing mark first. All right, so I pulled that plug out of there. I'll tell you what, for as very little time as it's run, that plug's got a bunch of carbon on it already. So it almost seems like this thing wasn't firing right. Well, I mean, obviously it wasn't. It was front of my track. So. But that's interesting. So let me get my, uh, see if I put my finger in here. Oh, that's not easy around that header. Well, I do what to do it. Do this hand. Let's see what we got here. I felt that. Let's see where we're at. I wish I had one of them scopes. I'll tell you what, that's, that mark is not far from, from uh, the mark on the balancer. Let's go again. That's right on zero.
But I'll tell you what, I swear I could hear pressure bleeding off back there. Like in one of the cylinders when that was turning. All right, let me pull this off. We are right on zero. Let's pull that cap off. Let's see what we got. I think the next, uh, the next thing we might do is get a compression gauge out and see what's going on. I could have one of those valves just a little bit too tight that it's not closing all the way. Stranger things have happened. I got the computer out of this thing so it's not sparking or firing a fuel pump. I can get a compression gauge in there on them headers. Let's try that. Let me find my compression gauge and we're going to stick it in there and see what uh, we're going to test them all on this side. Because I swear when I was cranking that, I was hearing one of them bleeding, bleeding pressure back. Oh, I wouldn't want to have to pull the head off this thing. But, uh, Let's uh, let's good next step. Let's let me find my stuff and we'll see where we're at. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, just gotta hook the battery up. Sixty. I'm good with that one. All right, shut this off. We'll get number two set up. All right, here's number well, number three actually. But uh, same deal with the plug. I mean, that thing had a ton of carbon on it just for the very short time this thing ran. Interesting. Let's see what we got here. One sixty. No problem there. That's good. Maybe I'm not hearing what I think I'm hearing, but you know, it just makes sense to check. I don't want to watch me do that. Get this set up. We'll do the next. All right. 
Did one, we did three. Let's see what five looks like. One sixty. Certainly nothing wrong with that. All right. So, oh, man, can I get to that one? Yeah, I can get to it. All right, let's do the next one. See what we got. I'm gonna go do them all. All right, let's see what number seven does. Ugh. Pretty close to 160. All right. Let's check the other side. Now, I'm trying to think if I had a valve out of adjustment and say it was hanging open just a little bit to let that pressure bleed back through, would I see it on the gauge? I think I would. Yeah, I think I would. I don't think it would hold pressure. All right, so let's uh, let's put this side back together dude, and do the other side. I may go through these valves again because I'm, I'm starting, you know, I adjusted them before the lifters pumped up. So now that the lifters have pumped up, could I have them a little bit too tight? It's a possibility. So um, let's see what the other left side looks like. And I may go through and just pull the valve covers. Not that big a deal. It's only eight bolts. Plug wires are already off. And uh, just run back through them and see what we got. Now that we've now that we got some oil pressure, the lifter should be pumped up. So I may have to have to do them again. All right, let's. Uh, I'll move to the other side. All right, so we're at uh, number two over here. Let's see, where's my button? Let's see what we got here. One sixty-five. Nothing wrong with that. By the way, did I say Happy Veterans Day? Because if I didn't, Happy Veterans Day, and thank you to everyone who served our country. I got a lot of military family and. Uh, I appreciate all they did for my freedom and if you're a if you're former military I appreciate all you did for my freedom so go out and uh, treat yourself to a nice dinner today and uh, thank you again for all that you did and all that you do all right let's get the next one set up Uh, number four. Oh, button. 160. So that's good. Hopefully there's not a problem with that. I was kind of hoping to find one that maybe wasn't building compression and then you take the valve cover off and Find that one valve is a little too tight and you snuck it down and problem solved. We got two more. So, let's see if we're thinking along the right lines or not. Same thing with every plug that comes out of here, just black. So it, it very well, you know, I didn't replace like the ignition module and the pickup coil in that distributor. Um, I didn't replace. The only thing I replaced in that distributor was rotor and the cap and the plug wire. So it's very possible it's in that distributor. So, But before I do all that, I want to go back through these. Um, so while I got the plug wires off, I might as four bolts, valve cover off, quick recheck on the valves. Uh, Makes sense to me, rather than 
put it back together, put the distributor in it, and then find out that's not it, and have to take it back, plug wires back off, and do it again. So, all right, let me get this next one set up. All right, only two left. Yeah, this would be number uh, number six. One sixty. I like it. So if anybody's sitting around watching uh, YouTube today for Veterans Day. While I was eating breakfast this morning, I was watching a show, and I can't remember the channel, was, the YouTube channel was on specifically, but it should be easy to find. Oh, it's kind of like military plane stuff. So there was a, uh, a guy telling the story about the SR-71 Blackbird spy plane, or supersonic plane, or fastest plane in the world, whatever it is. But the guy that did the very first test flight on that thing he was uh i think at 42,000 some, some ungodly height 42,000 feet going over Mach 3 and something happened to the plane there was two of them in it and the plane just disintegrated and when the guy woke up he was falling his helmet was iced over so he couldn't see where he, he couldn't see anything but his automatic chute deployed and he ended up living he he landed in a in a farmer's field now the other guy uh the navigator did too but he died the, his neck broke when the plane came apart but they said within a week that guy that lived was back test piloting the blackbird again and uh boy you talk about some cojones but a real interesting story. It wasn't a real long video. It was like 20 minutes or something, but real interesting. So, you know, I go on YouTube and search for SR-71 Blackbird test pilot or something along those lines. And I think you'd really enjoy it. I like that one. And there's one called uh, B-29 Frozen in Time. It's an older video about a b29 that i think landed on the ice in greenland and uh i think they ran out of fuel and that plane sat up there for decades and then uh some guy that had way too much money and didn't know what to do with it decided to go up rebuild this plane where it was sitting on the ice put new engines on it and try to fly it out and i won't tell you what happened uh, in case you weren't watching but Oh, B-29 Frozen in Time. Find that video. It's a it's an older video. It's it's a it was a Nova program on. Uh, you remember the old Nova Science pro, uh, program that was on, uh, P, you know, public broadcasting TV years ago. But I mean, just fascinating. All right, last one. Let's see what we got. Um, betting 160. Yep. All right. So I don't think we know all our cylinders are building compression, so that's good. I'm going to go ahead and pull these valve covers off. Go back through these valves one more time. Just make sure I got them all right. Then we will throw the plug wires on, give it another shot, and see what. Well, maybe if I don't find any valves that are that are way off, if everything's right, then there's then I think we're gonna go ahead and pull a distributor out of the van and uh, give that a shot, and see what happens. Because to me, it looks like timing is right. I don't see a real mechanical problem yet. We're just playing uh, 
process of elimination here. And by the way, don't be nasty on this. If you're going to leave a comment. My video several times ago when I was trying to start this thing. Some dude got on there and he's like, I just can't watch you try to do this anymore. It's, and uh, it was pretty much insulting my troubleshooting skills. So I'm not saying I'm the greatest mechanic in the world, but, you know, don't do that. If you don't like it, turn it off. Uh, I mean, why take the time to sit there and insult somebody else? It's, uh, it's pretty stupid if you ask me. So. Okay, uh, I'm going to go through the valves again. I'm not going to show that. We did that on a former video, and I'll be back in a minute. We'll let you know if we found anything. So you think that's a problem? <laughs> I can't believe that thing was made. Well, I guess it wouldn't make compression because the valve was closed. So that's uh, definitely an issue. It's not bent, is it? Let's see. Nope. Not bent. Rocker arm just jumped right off that thing. I don't know how that happened, but it did. All right, so I think we're on the right track. Let's uh, get that back on there and uh, go through these things again and see what's going on. Okay, so got the valves all adjusted. Like I said, show that one push rod was off. I had two other ones that were pretty loose. So I put the computer back in, put the plug wires back on. Uh, let me turn the ignition on. Let's see what we got. Fuel pump. Come on, baby. Oh, that feels good. Okay, well, that's what it was. I just uh, just had them valves out of adjustment still. Okay, so uh, I put my valve covers back on for the last time. And uh, I think we're good. Before I do a cam break in, I'm gonna have to hook a, hook a temporary tack up. I don't think I'm gonna run a tack full time in this thing, it just, I don't know, don't really need it. Just kind of listen to the sound of the motor and know where it's, the RPMs are at. So I'll just hook up a temporary tack so we can do the cam break in so I can know where we're at. But that was it, fixed. Whew. Right on, thank you, Jesus. Okay, so I'll put these valve covers back on and uh, we'll work on some other stuff. All right, morning everybody. So we uh really happy in that last clip. We got this thing running good. So I am working on wiring and I'm kind of getting everything really neatened up and finishing up um, some small stuff. Like I, I got my cigarette lighter in and uh, or it's not a cigarette lighter anymore. It's a 12 volt power outlet. And uh, just kind of neatening up these bundles, getting them... Uh, getting them tied together ran my wire for my uh, uh vehicle speed sensor um so interesting thing i've, I've found out <clears throat> i probably knew this before it's just been a while since i've done it so when you're doing your vehicle speed sensor on these some you there is a, a thing called a vehicle speed sensor buffer which is this guy and uh 
you do not need this on a manual transmission you can go right from your uh or an older manual transmission you can put uh you get a vehicle speed sensor from a place called uh jags that run and uh they're online i think they're, they're about 120 bucks but that will wire directly to the to the pcm so i did that and i'm wiring up the uh i didn't have the uh aldl the diagnostic connector uh hooked up yet so i'm running the wires for that that's the wire laying over there i gotta lengthen it a little bit but we had something crazy happen last night <clears throat> snow in early november i guess it's mid-november that's uh it's kind of unusual for to happen around this part of missouri i mean it does happen and then I had some kind of visitor last night. I don't know if that's dog or deer or what that is. But uh, apparently it was here after the snow. And the tracks come right up to my shop door. And there's none that way. And uh, I don't see any that way. So unless it went around that way. But... I don't know. It's an odd looking track. Anybody knows what that is? Put that in the comments. Okay, so today we're going to, uh, we're all about wiring. I wanted to get my shop heater going today. <clears throat> and that thing's got a small flue pipe on it. So one of the things I usually do is get up on the roof and just inspect that flue cap and make sure no bird's nest got in there. I know last year I had that problem, so... Obviously, I can't get on the roof with snow today, so uh, we're not going to fire the heater up today. We'll just rough it. Just wear a jacket out here. It's, it's not bad in here. Um, so anyway, here is my last wiring harness. And this is the wiring harness for the rear lights. And this plugs right there right into the dash harness and then we run it to the back so i'm going to get that put in i got uh, a fish wire in this connector i got just a couple other wires to land down in there but i cleaned a lot of that up yesterday <clears throat> moved a few things around um so there wasn't so much hanging down and uh, uh did my ignition relay connection a little bit different um make it more secure so uh all right well let's do that today and and i think i might unbury the front seat and put it in here also um just so i got something to sit on and make vroom vroom noises because <laughs> uh you know i really might not be that far away from a test drive down the road even though it'd be kind of cold without a windshield in it but it'd be neat to just make sure it goes through all the gears and the brakes work and everything. Okay, so let's uh, let's do some work. See what we got. All right, so just a quick thing on wiring, which I'm sure everybody probably knows this stuff, but uh, good reminder for somebody who hasn't done it before. When you're doing this PCM wiring, or really all your wiring, solder and heat shrink everything. Don't use wire nuts. Wire nuts are for household stuff. They're not for things that vibrate like cars. Um, butt connectors I really don't like. Because um, they can come loose over time. You know, I, sometimes crimp connectors, you know, on these grounds, they use some crimp connectors. But uh, most of the time I like to solder and heat shrink everything. And then inspect your heat shrink when you're done because... Uh, let me show you this one. You see that? That is one tiny strand of wire poking through that heat shrink. And that thing can ground out and cause you all kinds of hassle. So I'm going to put some tape over that. So after, after you do them, just inspect them, run your hands over them. Make sure you don't feel anything if you do. You know, cut it off and do it again, or in this case, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put a little piece of tape over that. 
I was just replacing the solder. So usually before I side my heat shrink over it, I'll just kind of run my thumb over the solder joint, make sure there's nothing sharp. And if there is, just take a pair of pliers and smash it down before you do this. I messed that one up. And then uh, as you look through your pinout diagram for your wiring, you're, you know, depending on your application, you're going to find some wires that you may not need, may not use, that are in the harness. So I like to leave a little bit of that wire when I cut it off and just put a piece of heat shrink over it and uh, shrink that down just in case later you find out oops I did need that wire then it, it's not cut all the way off at the plug and then you know that's more of a hassle if it's like this then you can just say oh well I did need that after all I'll cut that heat shrink off and put my wire on there and I'm good so uh, I think my PCM is gonna go right here in the center of the back seat and uh, I was kind of looking at how the seat goes in. I think we're going to be good that this isn't going to rub on anything. But I am going to put some, uh, kind of do what I did with this piece of stick down insulation. So I'll put a piece of that, you know, like where it crosses over the hump here where the seat goes. Stick that down there. I'll probably, there's a plastic wire race that goes, uh, screws to the floor. I'll probably use that and tuck it in there. And then that, that over the wires on the rest and the carpet over that and make sure you don't put it like in a place where people are going to be banging their feet around all the time. So you know, this will probably go like over here like that. So, you know, get it in the corner, run it down the edge. Shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so... I am going to go ahead and clean up in here a little bit. I've got a lot of tools and junk in here. And we're going to unwrap that um, uh, that rear light wiring harness. I know there's some things in there I don't need. And before that harness went through these. So, and then I think up over that hinge. So I think we're just going to try to run it there again. With the being out of the van, it's like way longer than what I need. So that's good. We'll just uh, clean it up, run it back there, and, uh, and try to get that done today. All right, let's take a look. All right, so I'm getting my taillight wiring harness figured out here. And um, the wiring diagram I've got is not real clear on what wire does what. So... Uh, we're just going to test it here. And I know that... Alright, so this is the whole harness going from the fuse box to the back. And I know this side is my passenger side of the car because it came back on the van on the driver's side and then it crossed over in the back. So this is a lot longer. So this is passenger side. We know that. So I've got Two 1157 bulbs, which are you got a bright filament and a dim filament. So the the, the dimmer one will be your tail lights, the brighter one will be your stop light and signal. And then this is a single filament bulb, so this is going to be the backup lights. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do for those. If I'm going to hook them up because that old three-speed transmission does not have a backup light switch in it. And that's how you would have had to do it on a manual transmission. They had a switch built into the transmission that when you put it in reverse, it made the circuit and turned those lights on. I guess I could put them on a switch under the dash, but I might just run the wire and uh, cap it off under the dash for now. And, you know, maybe think about it if I want it later. Um, I don't know. But anyway, so what I did... Yeah, it's got my battery charger out, clamp this on the grounds, and we've got a bundle of wires here that we're going to go through, see what does what, and we're going to mark it. Now, I know I've got this wire here. This is a gray and a brown that went into a little plug that I don't recall what this is for. I think this is something to do with 
conversion van stuff, dome lights or something that was in the back. But what I'm concerned with is tail lights, stop lights, and brake lights. So let's see what we got here. Let's take this dark green and see what we got. All right. So that's the bright filament. So that is um, brake and signal for passenger side. So let's mark that. Oops. I'll just stick a piece of tape on it. I'll just put BR slash T for turn signal pass. So we know what that is. All right, now brown should be um, taillights. So I should get a low filament on both bulbs. And I did. Okay. So this is going to be tail lights. You got to watch your wire colors sometimes because I noticed there was a yellow wire in here. And if you follow it down when it hits this plug, it's yellow on this side, but it's dark green on this side. And then on this side, it's dark green, it's dark green. So I don't know why they, I don't know what the deal with that is. Let's, let's see what that is. Let's see what yellow is. Okay. So yellow is break and Turn signal on that side. BR turn drivers. All right, so what haven't we checked here? So we got this one, we got Check tail, we check yellow, this brown, this gray, it's nothing. So we got the light green. This should be backup lights. It should light those two bulbs. Yep, that's backup lights. Like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and run the wire, put the bulbs in the socket. We'll figure out what to do with it later. All right, so we got that figured out. So I think we're gonna pull, and then when all my tail lights, I'll have to come off and do a license plate light off of that too. So these sockets will not work in those lights, I don't think. I can see if I can make them work in there. Probably what I'm going to do is cut the excuse me, cut the original. Got the hiccups. Cut the original sockets off of uh, the old wiring harness. They look like they're in pretty good shape, and use those. So uh, I'll see if these will fit in that 
Let me get one of those tail light cans. Take a look. There's one. Is there a way to make that work in there? No, not really. All right. So we'll just uh, we'll clean these up, polish them. Uh, we'll go ahead and cut the get the old wiring harness out, cut those off, and uh, solder those guys on here before we proceed. Okay, let me show you something else we got over here. So I saved this off of the uh, off the car. This is that. This is good. Good. Uh, example why I don't throw anything away so this came off of the uh, off of this car and this is a, a wire channel and it just opens up you run the wire down there I just ran a couple screws in it and then that thing snaps and it goes under your carpet and hides real nice so I like that so I got a little piece of it left because I had to cut this piece off since you know I like those doors but I might take this piece and put it over there on the passenger side where the wiring harness is going up next to the tunnel. Just because you're going to have somebody sitting there, you're going to have your feet shuffling around. That way, uh, won't be any chance of you know moving that wire under the carpet and uh, and uh, grinding something out. So probably wouldn't happen, but I got it. Might as well do it. Okay, uh, we'll check back in a bit. Okay, I think I am done for today. So I uh, cut all these old sockets off, tested them all, and I marked the uh, uh, the brake and turn signal wire on each one, so I know which one it is. So got all my sockets here; they're all in good shape. They all work. I, uh, Came back here, ran the wire up through the deck lid, got it run across the deck lid. So I just need to finalize it in there, but I'll have to tap off this side and then I'll have to run another wire over because you got one tail light in the body and the other one's in the, in the deck lid. So I'll have to take care of that, not a big deal. And then here's my, uh, pigtail run up to here and I, Hard to believe, but it was not long enough. I figured the length of that van, this thing would be way long, but I think what happened, if I remember, that wire went down through that A-pillar, down through there, and I couldn't get it to pull out of there, so I cut it off up at the top, and I cut the plug off up at the bottom, so I lost some length. But not a big deal, we'll lengthen that, and it will tie into this pigtail down here. And I got two wires for signals I gotta hook up. That's my horn wire I gotta hook up. And uh, these are um, dome lights, which this had dome lights on the side. So um, we'll do that. And that's pretty much it for the wiring. Um, except for like radio and stuff. But uh, I put this seat in there. This seat came out of some kind of Ford and it does, it is like just a little bit too wide. So I'm, but the base is fine. So I think what I'm gonna do, it's, it's gonna have to get recovered. I think when I take the covers off of this, I might see if I can tuck that frame in a little bit and just make it like, you know, an inch less wide on each side. I got this seat for nothing, you know, so the, uh, the frame is in good shape. So I'm going to make it work. I'm not going to go out and look for another one. And I'll have to make a uh, make some uh, tracks that um, they're sitting off the floor in the back there. And it's sitting on the hump. So I'll have to uh, modify those and make those work. Not a big deal. Everything's not a big deal. <laughs> hey, it's running. That's... Uh, Oh, that seat actually feels pretty good. 
so yeah we're looking good and i'm digging it so uh i think that's gonna be it for today that's probably kind of a long video so thanks for hanging in with me i'm gonna go in and uh, my grandbabies are coming over and we're gonna hang out the rest of the evening so let's go in uh oh and i did put that other piece of, of uh wire channel down there ran my wires through that like i said i was gonna do so that worked out good so let's go inside uh get a word from the lord and uh relax a little bit all right everybody so uh thanks for watching along on this video and uh pretty good day you know we got uh we got the thing running right finally so still need to do the cam break in but um, i'm confident that we're uh we got it running like it should or as, as good as it can without uh doing the uh you know programming a new chip for that computer so very happy with that lots of other good stuff done so uh feel like i made the the biggest leap ahead on this thing that i have in uh, in several weeks so that feels pretty good so done for tonight grandkids are coming over we're gonna hang out you know i'm gonna be grandpa and uh, be silly with them and have some fun so but before we go let's go ahead and uh and get a word from the lord and you know i'm, I'm still kind of focusing on this uh series our pastor has been doing a church on ecclesiastes you know we're, we're talking about the, the how the things of the world just don't bring the satisfaction and and um you know the, the futility of, of of living without the lord so let's uh let me read uh this one section here so uh he talked about god's goodness flows from his sovereign grace and let's look at ecclesiastes 6 where are we at here? 7 through 11. So there is no satisfaction in the labor. All a man's labor is for his mouth, and yet the appetite is not satisfied. For what advantage does the wise man have over the fool? What advantage does the poor man have knowing how to walk before the living? There's no satisfaction in the future. What the eyes see is better than what the soul desires. What the eyes see is better than what the soul desires. Yes. This too is futility and striving after wind. Through 11. Whatever exists has already been named, and it is known what man is, for he cannot dispute with him who is, strained, who is stronger than he is. For there are many words which increase, many, many words which increase futility. What then is the advantage to a man? And there's, uh, so if we look at, at verse 7, all a man's labor is for his mouth, and yet the appetite is not satisfied. Um, so what, what we're searching for in the Lord, what God gives us is, is true satisfaction, not just provision, not just what we need at, at the moment. We can, be, uh, we can be fully satisfied in our relationship uh, with him. And then um, when we tell you, he talks about worldly success, what advantage does the wise man have over the fool? What advantage does the poor man have knowing how to walk before the living? So that relationship with the Lord can give us, uh, can give us you know, divine wisdom uh, over worldly success. And then in verse 9, um, what the eyes see is better than what the soul desires. This too is futility, futility and a striving after wind. Um, you know, we, we, we search out pleasurable things in our life. And, uh, you know, that, I think it's a good uh, example, like when, when kids get things for Christmas, that, um, you know, they want that new toy and they want that new toy and they want that new toy and they get that new toy and they play with it for a day, a couple of days, and then it's, it's off in the toy box and never seen again. Um, you know, and then they're already thinking ahead to birthday. What am I going to get for birthday? And as adults, we're the same way. You know, I want that new car project. I want that new truck. I want that new this. I want that new that. And as soon as we get it, <coughs> that pleasure is pretty fleeting. It doesn't last very long. So look, let's look at Psalms 24, 27, 14. He says, um, 27, 14, where are we at here? Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. So wait on him that uh, he's going to give you the, the more permanent things. And, you know, that, that relationship is going to give you um, 
um, you know, it's, it's going to satisfy your heart. It's going to satisfy your longing. And it's not going to be, uh, as you, we grow in that relationship, we spend time with the Lord. It's not going to be something that, uh, that we get bored of and that goes away. And let's look at Philippians uh, chapter 1, verse 6. Uh, For I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. And uh, that is so true in my life. When I look back to the time I was saved, uh, where I was, um, it was somewhat of an immediate change with me. But when I look, that was 1994. When I look at my life now, if I turn around and look back, uh, I, I see the hill. You know, I was down here in 94. And even though I was saved, I was still there. And 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 over the years, you, you, you climb that hill and you get more and more vested in that relationship with the with Christ and, and the things in your life start changing and not everything changes at once. It's, it's growth and it's growing in that relationship. You know, just like I talked about our relationship with our spouses, you know, if we look back to um, those of us who've been in long marriages when we first married them, um, how little we really knew about them compared to 10 years later, 15 years later, 20 years later, if we're investing that time in that relationship. So just want to encourage you to do the same, and if we, as we keep going in Ecclesiastes, we're going to find out that, um, you know, all, all these first four, five, six chapters, um, Solomon is talking about the futility of of life. But as we get on, then he starts talking about, you know, um, this this relationship and time with God, and how uh, that is what makes it not futile, and what brings. Um, a uh, real reward too is a real satisfaction and real wisdom and real purpose in our lives so awesome stuff um okay so let's uh have a quick word of prayer and um we'll end this for today father we just uh we thank you for this time with you today and uh thank you for that little bit of snow out there that's uh, that's awful pretty uh, and uh, i'm sure that cheered a lot of people up to see it and uh, we just ask you that as we walk through this week, that you would uh, you would touch our hearts, soften our hearts, and and give us that desire to grow in that relationship with you, and to uh, to put these things of the world and these pleasures of the world and these things we seek out, uh, put them in their proper place of priority. You know, much lower of priority in our lives. You know, you you should be first. Our spouse should be second, and everything else should fall. Um, in line behind that. So we ask this in the name of your precious son, Jesus. Amen. All right, hit like, hit subscribe, uh, tell your friends, uh, leave a comment, and um, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.